Hawaii is in the center of the Pacific and it's, it has the highest rate of endemism of, of plants in, of anywhere in the world. And uh, it's just, I mean, it's such a jewel to have this many varieties of, of native plants that you can't find any place else in the world. If someone were to actually um, go hiking uh, and, and experience what a, a native forest is about, they're certainly more beautiful and harmonious than these places that have been overtaken by what are basically weeds. Um, and there's a lot of value, I think, to understanding that th there is this relationship with, with, with plants that have evolved together. I'm an artist and I'm a big fan of native Hawaiian plants. Um, I use them a lot in my work. I try to um, zone in on, on those uh, types of plants to show people that there is a lot of beauty in native, native Hawaiian plants, but you have to look, you have to go close often and look and see how, just how beautiful they are. I think it's very important for people to understand um, how rich the evolution was and is in Hawaii and how important it is to preserve these quintessential expressions of Hawaii. They don't exist anywhere else in the world. Um, they're completely unique. interest in, in native Hawaiian plants actually started with uh, working with some friends on restoring Mo'olele, the canoe, the 43-foot double hull canoe in Lahaina. You, you know, you begin to realize that you can't do these things without the plants. Yes, you can make a layout of some other kind of a plant. You could make a canoe out of some other kind of wood, but it's, it's really not the same. You lose it. The culture is dependent upon the plants. Native Hawaiian plants are the Hawaiian culture. They're the whole basis for almost everything that the Hawaiians did and still do. In Hawaii, they learned a whole new set of plants that they didn't know from Tahiti or Samoa and Tonga. And they found uses for those plants. They brought their knowledge from other places and applied that kind of knowledge to say recognizing certain families of plants would be good for fibers or certain families of plants would be good for medicines and that even though it was a brand new plant endemic found only here in Hawaii, they, for instance, the Olana plant, which is probably one of the strongest plant fibers in the world, um, they were, Hawaiians are the ones who found the usage for that. If you're an evolutionary biologist and you've been, you've trained on the mainland, Hawaii is famous. When I arrived here and started looking around at what was the state of protection of the native Hawaiian plant biodiversity resources, uh, it was appalling. It was shocking how little attention, how few resources are being expended for what is really the crown gem of biodiversity in the United States. It's such an education living in Hawaii and knowing that most everything you see, not only are they not native, they're very beautiful, very pretty. They're all introduced and uh, in a lot of cases, they're terribly detrimental to, to the native plants. Since contact by Europeans, so many of them have just been totally obliterated forever. It's really hard to turn back the clock. It's really hard to stop that, that destruction. People need to know about these things and when they know, they care. Um, lack of knowledge is probably the biggest reason the plants are disappearing. Each one of them can be thought of as a, like a, a Beethoven symphony, a creation of nature's imagination. So to understand the way the mind of nature works, each of these organisms is a part of the thought of nature. And so to lose them, is to basically lose the heritage of our planet. I think that we're part of a larger community that we evolved with here on Earth, which includes all of our animal and plant cousins, and that without them, we don't survive. And um, we've tended to separate ourselves um, in, in more recent history. I think it's very important to reconnect. Um, 
and I don't see any issue of more importance than preserving the environment. Without that, we don't survive. I mean, if we don't care about it, then, then, then who will? Um, I mean, this is our responsibility to, to be stewards of this place. I mean, we're the residents here. This generation can either let these species go extinct, or a species or an ecosystem go extinct, or they can keep it going. And if we don't keep it going, We've made a decision for all the future generations and I just don't think we have the right to do it. So since we don't have that right, then we have an obligation. The Maui Niui Botanical Garden is doing an excellent job and a very necessary job of heightening this awareness. The garden was opened in 1976 and was the first botanical garden in the state to do native plants as its focus. And it's also the only botanical garden in the state that's in a coastal dune system. So we have uh, an opportunity that many other gardens don't have to um, conserve coastal and dry forest plants. We have a seed bank for one species that is extirpated from um, a, one area of Maui in 2000, uh, the last five trees uh, disappeared from Pu'opali, and the species is our, actually our state flower, Hibiscus brackenrigii. So we have the last 34 trees that exist, and we're producing seed to go back out to that area. In some ways, you're, you're undoing some of the, the errors or the misdeeds of the past by uh, bringing back the, the uh, native plants. Most people, when they first come into the gardens, one of the first reactions is, wow, we had no idea this was, this wonderful thing was here. From preschool through, through uh, college, uh, we have, you know, if they call us up and want a, a tour, then we can adapt it to whatever age uh, is interested. We do many uh, plant classes that use the plants. We um, are doing tapa making and tapa dyeing from plants that we have in the gardens. The kids today, who were born and raised here, who've never really been there to look at the plants, it's wonderful to drag them there. I feel like I'm always dragging them places. But once they get, you know, it's kind of an effort, but once they get there and their reports show me that they really did enjoy it and learn, I'm always surprised how much they learned, actually, how much they did remember. We are um, promoting xeriscaping, which is water conservation landscaping. Hotels and the landscape industry um, you know, can come to the garden and learn how native plants look in a landscape. It's great to see more and more people coming in, especially more and more Hawaiians coming in. and Just coming in and looking around and remembering makes what we're doing worthwhile. We have interacted with the community on so many levels and are doing so much more than I thought we would do in such a short period of time that it just amazes me. Any support that people can give to the garden, I mean, will just take us that much further. I think it's a worthwhile organization. I think that we use our money well. It's just a place that's full of really dedicated people. One of our members said to us, I can't believe how much you do with so little. So it's mostly little amounts that, that come in and we're, we're able to do a lot. We have a lot of great volunteers that help us. One of the things that we're looking uh, forward to is getting a, a building put in. We're working out of a trailer right now and we just don't have the facility to do the educational programs that we want to do to have a, a, a resource library available to the community to provide uh, you know, lecture space for educational programs and things. And these are the kind of kinds of things that we um, have been doing a little bit but we can just see that we could be doing so much more in the future. One of my things I'd love to see in the future is every local kid walk in the garden and say, oh, you know, that's a kukui tree and, you know, that's a, um, you know, what, what, just be able to name plants as they see them and just be familiar with them and, and knowledgeable about them. When they start to learn about them, they, they start to really 
fall in love with them and understand how they make this place what it is.